What's up, what's up, what's up? Thank y'all for tuning in again for the third show. Got a lot of feedback from the second show, man. Like everybody telling me they got they like the show and um, getting a whole lot of feedback. That's what I want everybody to keep doing. That's most important to me, man. I appreciate everybody that commented and sent me texts and sent me messages on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. I appreciate it, man. Y'all keep it coming. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, the shirt I'm wearing. A friend of mine uh, he started a uh, website called youmyg.com. They got all the fresh gear. They're doing a lot of hip-hop stuff down there in New York and South Carolina, even down here in Louisiana. Y'all go check it out. Like I see, yomyg.com. They got some fresh gear, man. Y'all go check it out. Uh, they up and coming. It's a movement. The whole Who That Nation is in a frenzy after the Jimmy Graham trade yesterday. I think I'm one of the few people that ain't tripping at all. Man, let Jimmy Graham go, man. Let him walk. I ain't tripping off this. Number one, we got a first-round pick out the deal. Number two, <laughs> we got a Pro Bowl center in Max Unger. He's pretty doggone good. And he rated like 97 on Madden. <laughs> but seriously, though, he's a great player. He's, a, he's one of the best centers in the, in the NFL, arguably. And not only that, thirdly, we $12 million under the cap now. So now we can go get two other studs and fulfill some needs that we need to do on the defensive side of the ball. We good. This is a great business move by Sean Payton and Mickey Loomis. Trust me on this. Relax, who that nation? Relax. Stop getting caught up with the names and, and getting all in your feelings because you like Jimmy Graham and you know what he did the last couple of years. Look, I'm not down playing what Jimmy did these last three years. I know he led the NFL in uh, touchdown catches and things like that. But at the end of the day, Jimmy Graham was soft. He bred. Jimmy Graham got punked on a numerous of occasions. <laughs> The Carolina game comes to mind with Thomas Davis slamming his head in the ground repeatedly. And he does nothing. Drew Brees throws an interception. He cheap shots Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham does nothing. Uh-uh. Where your pride at, man? He has no pride. I'm big on pride, by the way. He has no pride. The Seattle game, the year before last, in the playoffs and in the regular season, the whole LOB punked him. I mean, my grandma could have literally punked this dude. I don't, know what, I don't know what his problem is. I can't go to war with nobody like that. And obviously, Sean Payton feel the same way. That's why we got rid of him. And $40 million? Stop. He's not worth $40 million. And anybody out there that think Jimmy Graham is worth $40 million, you need to go get checked by a specialist or something. Because he's not worth that. $10 million a year? I'm sorry. He's not worth that. Especially when you can't block to save your life. When Jimmy Graham in the game, when you're playing against a good team that pays attention to detail, they know he can't block. They know we passing the ball. When he's not in the game, they know we running the ball. That made our, our, our offense very, very predictable over the last few years and stagnant. People don't understand it's little things like that that can cause a team to have an advantage over you. This is a great move. I love it. I think that we're going to put a Super Bowl roster this season together and going forward. Trust me on this. Sean Payton and Mickey Loomis know exactly what they're doing. Since 2006, since the Sean Payton era has started, he's always put a great roster together. He's always drafted well. He's always got, he's always found these dominant and rough free agents that nobody wanted. We're in a good place. Trust me. And if we make it to the NFC Championship in the Super Bowl, there's going to be an afterthought. Y'all not even going to be thinking about Jimmy Graham's soft till. He soft his cotton, man. Let him go to Seattle and be soft out there, man. We don't need that. Now, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with my dog, Keenan Lewis. I mean, Kenny, stop hitting the send button, bro. Step away from the phone. Stop hitting the send button, bro. When you hit send, there's no coming back from that. Stop hitting the send button, bro. All the stuff that you're doing on social media right now, man, you need to delete all that. You need to go to the, the Saints front office and apologize. This ain't what's up. If you have an issue with the Saints and how they handling things, you tell your agent and you handle that in-house. Now this is gonna be called this is gonna cause a distraction going forward in mini camp and OTAs. We don't want that. We're trying to compete for a Super Bowl. Stop hitting the sim button, bro. Step away. I know a lot of people had a problem with us releasing Pierre Thomas and Curtis Lofton. I really didn't like the uh release of Pierre Thomas, but I know they were trying to, you know, get the cap straightened and uh uh get under the cap and things like that. But for what I'm hearing from certain sources, they're saying there's a chance that Pierre Thomas could return back to the Saints. So let's keep our eyes out, our eyes out on it. Curtis Lofton, I have no problem with that release. Um, I think he was a pretty solid player. I know he led, the, I led our team in tackles the last few years, but 
he can't run sideline to sideline. Somebody that run a, a sweep, he way over there. I mean, way over there. He can't run. So I think what Sean Payton trying to do and Rob Ryan, they trying to get a more athletic linebacker, especially your Mike. Your Mike need to be real athletic. And Sean, and Sean Payton understands that the way today's game is with a, 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 a lot of people passing the ball way more than ever before, you need LBs that can run. Lofty can't do that. So I had no problem with that release. And that also put us more under the cap too. So y'all just relax, uh, who that nation. We good. I trust everything that Sean Payton and Mickey Loomis is doing right now. We gonna be good. And like I see, it win the NFC Championship or the Super Bowl next season, y'all ain't gonna be thinking about this Jimmy Graham tree. I promise y'all, this is gonna be better for us, not only this year, but going forward. Who that? I wanna hear everybody, I wanna get everybody feedback on this. I wanna know how y'all feel about this tree. I wanna know how y'all feel about the releases of uh, Pierre Thomas and Curtis Lofton. And I just want to, I want to, I want to see, get everybody take on it, cause the whole social network, Twitter, Instagram, everything, Facebook, everybody is. It was in an uproar yesterday when this trade went down. So I want to hear, get everybody feedback on this, man. Let me know how y'all, what y'all think about it. Like I see, I ain't tripping off it. Jeremy Graham can walk. We good. Who that? Oh, and by the way, what is Chip Kelly doing out there in Philly? I mean, is he on meth or something? Some kind of dope we don't know about. How you let Deshaun Jackson go? Then you let Jeremy Maglin walk. And now you trade LaShawn McCoy. It's mind-boggling what he's doing out there in Philly. Thank you, Chip Kelly, for giving the Dallas Cowboys a second straight NFC East title. Thank you. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. The Final Four is set in the playoffs, high school playoff brackets. Down there in Lake Charles, uh, we got Landry Walker. Taking on St. Michael in the final four, led by Landry Walker, led by Lamar Peters, Lamar Parking Lot Peters, as I like to call him. Uh, playing against St. Michael, led by Jacob Evans, six five point guard who committed to Cincinnati. That's gonna be a great game. Uh, McDonald thirty five is, is me know with, uh, I believe Salmon, with Salmon is the number one seed, but thirty five has a guard that I really like, Dijon Juru. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. Combo guard could do it all. Pass. Uh, score the ball, play good defense. So that's going to be a good game in the, four, the uh, top four teams in, uh, in four that I'm really going to be paying attention to. After watching Landry Walker all season, this is my pick to win the four year state title this weekend down there in Lake Charles. Led by Lamar Peters, one of the best players in the state, if not the nation. I'm trying to figure out why Lamar is ranked at the bottom of 150 in Rivals.com. This guy's been balling all year, just straight balling. One of the best scores I've seen in the high school level in some time. And everybody said Landry Walker couldn't do it after they're losing Tyree Griffin to Oklahoma State. But Lamar is clearly showing that this team is one of the favorites to cut down the nets this weekend down there in Lake Charles. Y'all check him out. One of my favorite players in the state.
my Twitter reactions. I've been having I've been having some questions I've been getting asked on Twitter that they want me to ask on the show. I got a question from again uh Jonas Thomasy on Twitter. He asked me, so the Lions release Reggie Bush. So the Saints sign him back to both of the return game. Uh I like Reggie. I know Reggie didn't want to leave the Saints when he left the first time. I would bring Reggie back only for the right price. I mean, we can't pay him the same thing he was getting paid in Detroit. I would love to have him back because that would be a nice love, another dimension we can bring to our running game, especially after releasing Pierre Thomas. But uh, he had to come back for the right price. I mean, we can't pay him the money he was getting paid in Detroit. That's the only way I would want to bring him back. And, yes, that would be good to boast our return game. Take uh, him, put him in punt return, put him in kick return. He's not a featured back in our offense. And let him go ahead and make plays in the special teams. So, yes, I would take a look at Reggie Bush only for the right price. My next question I got asked on Twitter was from Hayes Johnson. He asked, you think D. Rose is done? And what do you think the Bulls should do now? I'm not going to say he's done, like his career is done. But far as playing at an MVP level like he was three, four years ago, I don't see it happening again. When you start messing around, messing up your knee consistently like he's been doing, you got to kind of know that he's on a decline. But like I said, I don't think his career is over, but it's not going to be what it was. And if I'm the Bulls, I'm trying to trade him away. That's just me. Uh, I know they say he's trying to come back in four to six weeks. Me personally, if I'm the front office of the Bulls, I'm trying to shut him down, especially if you plan on keeping him. I think Derrick Rose is a great talent. Um, I'm sad to see him keep getting hurt like this over and over because he's a phenomenal player to watch, and he's one of the most dynamic point guards that we've seen in our time. But I, when you start messing up with your knees like that, man, it's, it's kind of hard to come back and play at a high level the way he was playing.